Um, welcome back everyone to our today's session where we will um, hopefully finish our uh, classification session. Um, so when we come to our repository um, inside machine learning, uh, we have classification. We will uh, take it out to here, just like we have regression. I will remove it so that we can have classification. So when you have classification, we can come here. Um, yeah, so this is what we discussed yesterday. Um, we discussed about what is classification. We, you know, even went further to discuss about, I mean, looking at saying that um, uh, the uh, data before you train your machine learning model, you actually need to uh, clean your data, put your data into share, if the data is somehow imbalanced, you need to balance the data and so on and so forth. And then we stop at here, balance the data. So today we'll continue here where we continue with balancing the data. Okay, so <clears throat> um, if you remember yesterday, we are working on a data set called Cosine data set about the food. And um, we literally have, um, uh, we literally have uh, our data set in good shape. So let me see our data. Okay, so this is our data set uh, where we finish. Uh, this is DF. Um, this is also DF where we have the levels. This is the levels and this is our level in the future. So um, if you remember, uh, let me go back and take the complete data set. Uh, is called what is the code name of the data set before? Ingredient. Okay, so we call it DF actually. All right, so what I want to say is let's look at the data set originally. So we can see this is a data set and we have the cuisine and we have the uh, uh, the ingredient, right? And based on this ingredient, for example, uh, we can say this is almond, this is it, this is it. So if we see one, it means for this kind of food, it contains this ingredient. If it is zero, it doesn't contain this ingredient. So now the idea, what we want to do is Given all the ingredients, we will give in the ingredient, which they are our futures now. This is our futures. Given this ingredient, predict what kind of cuisine food is that? Is it Indian food or Japanese food? Remember yesterday I talked about we have what we call futures. We have what we call the target or level. Yeah, here. Yeah. Um, this one. You see, these are the futures, right? These values, right? And this is a target or class level that we want to predict. So if you have been given the futures, you can predict the target. So for example, here the flower, um, you know, with 5.1 sepal length, 3.5, this, this, then this combination gives you setosa. So that's what we want to do here as well. Given these, you know, data set for cuisine, these are the futures from almond to the end, all the futures. These are the ta target, the class we want to predict. So if you see zero, it means this, kind of food does not contain almond and something like that. And we took our time yesterday just to understand the data and to clean it. And then finally, uh, what we have here, I want to remove it. So uh, what we have here, the future. So when we train, want to train your machine learning model, you create data frame only for your future, future variables or observation. And you create a different data frame for uh, you are target. So when you are given a data set that contain both the futures and the target in one data frame, so what you need to do is divide that um, data set with different future set and also different, you know, target level. So that is what we want to do. So if you look at it here, um, After we finish, uh, that is what we did here. We now drop everything to have future data set, future data set. You can see this is our future data set, right? 
which contain futures. And this one, DF that cosin will give you only the cosines. You can see this is the only cosines. Can you see that? The level. So here we can see we have the levels. You can see the cosine. And here you can see the futures. So that's what I say. Like given a data set, you need to pick the levels separately and pick the future. So we want to give our machine learning model to say, hey, machine learning model, these are the futures. And these are the target. Given this, the first one, given this this, this 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 it is indian cousin given this 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 it is indian cousin so we want to turn machine learning model to learn this um yeah so that is that but one thing we should see is that um if we look at the okay these are the levels the indian cousin when we run this we can see this uh, we have different cousin indian thai we already know this we have different these levels right um Um, we have this, all these different levels. Um, but one thing we don't know is that uh, how many levels do we have for Indian and Thai and Chinese? How many different instances or observations do we have? Because we made mention that uh, when we want to train machine learning model, you need to have each class, you need to have equal, somehow equal representation so that some data is not that too much in the data set. You have a kind of fair representation, right? Um, so let's look at how much do we have for each class. Now, uh, who can tell us um, how we can see, uh, how can we can observe the uh, number of instances in each class? Who can tell us using Python? Who can tell us? Now, this is different instances, right? Now, how can I find out how many Indians do I have? How many Japanese do I have? Uh, who can volunteer um, using Python? How can we do that? To find the unique. We can, what about this? What about this? You can see, oh, levels. I mean, levels, these levels. Cuisine. Okay. But yeah, here yeah, I change it to data frame so you can see this. So here we want to find how many unique instances do we have? Who can tell us what we can do? Um, you can write in the chat. Okay, not okay. So somebody says shape. So let's look at this shape. Oh, but remind remind that this is um uh data frame. When we say a shape, it would tell us how many rows do we have and how many columns do we have. So here we have rows this and we have one column. So this is a shape. But what I want to do, what, what I want is how can find how can we find out how many Indians do we have? This you can see this is a data frame, right? How many Japanese? This is very simple. Who can volunteer to tell us? How can we do that in Python to find which class do we have? Okay, somebody is writing count values. Okay, somebody Rama said value count. Okay, so let's try that value counts. Is it a function something like this? Okay, so yeah, so you can see count value count. Um, you know, uh, give us this. So for example, you can see cousin Korean is this, Indian is this, Chinese is this. So this function is Python function. Um, and as you remember, um. Thai, we have this. So you can see here, our data set is not balanced, right? So what you need to do before you start training your machine learning model is to balance your data sets, right? So, I mean, sometimes um, you may have your data uh, that uh, not, what I mean by balance is not like, if this is 1,000, you must have 1,000. 
a balanced data set is a way like if this class is 1000 and another one is 920 is somehow you know good is you know if this is 500 this is 480 460 you know there but 799 to 89 this is you know huge you know difference so we need to balance the data set but how can we balance our data set so in machine learning as i said yesterday there are different ways to balance your data set um one way is to you know use uh uh, uh what we call oversampling or downsampling uh oversampling is when you have for example one data set is 1000 and um, one is two thousand is uh, five uh, one hundred, so you cannot. So you can do what we call oversampling. You can take the one hundred and make it to like nine hundred or one thousand as well. So just to give you an example, when you want to predict, for example, we have people in Kano and we want to predict their average, you know, income. And now when I try to do sampling of the people to train, I select Dangote, I select Abdul Samad, I select all those millionaires. And now I select one very, um, maybe I select millionaires in Kano, like 50 of them. And I select, you know, um, you know, uh, people that are, you know, they are poor, like 20, like 10 and millionaires 50. Now, if you have millionaires 50 and poor person that, you know, his salary is just like 50,000. And you say you want to use this data to predict the salary of one a new person. So you can see like people with, you know, uh, millionaires can overshadow the smaller people, right? And you know, it can predict that the average, you know, salary per person in Kano is like three billion. You know, I mean, three, you know, because like we have many. So that's the essence um, uh, that you need to balance your data with millionaires or with all poor. So that's the data. So one way is we use what we call um, oversampling or downsampling. Uh, there is machine learning. There is a method, uh, a package that used to do what we call data sampling, which is called smarting, smart, which is available in, uh, you know, uh, library that I showed. So what smart uh, data imbalance does is that, look at the original data here. You can see this class is, we have more of this class, right? So what this algorithm smart does is that it will look up one algorithm, one data point and one algorithm and create another data point close to them. You can see it create another duper point close to them. So this is it for each orange, for example, if these are orange, for each orange, smooth find it is nearest neighbor. So what are the nearest neighbor? This and this are neighbor. Then the next it drew a line between the orange and one of its neighbor. So it drew a line, for example, dash, 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 create a line. Can you see that? I pick a point on this line and create a new synthetic orange. So you can see it picked a line and create a new synthetic orange. The process is repeated for each orange. So this process is repeated. You can see here now you create. Now here you can create this one, you know, create this one. Um, you know, this create this, this create this. So you can see you create many points. And you know, you can see at the here we can have some kind of sample. And this is more uh, you know, uh, this um color is more here. So you can continue this replicate sample again. You can, you know, resample until you have some kind of a you know, what we call balanced data. This is uh, an approach that is called SMART uh, that is used to do uh, balanced data from imbalanced data. So we want to do that to make our data set balanced. So here you can see um, we, you know, import balance. Um, oh no, this uh, example that I want to give. Okay, um, no, let me remove this one. Okay, so we want to um, uh, use SMART. So here we see that uh, we need to import SMART library. Oh no. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Here we need to import. Uh, so here you can see I import uh, SMART uh, from imbalance. This library import SMART. Uh, SMART is kind of, uh, you know, library that allows you to do balance your data set. So here you can see I create um I don't know. Uh, okay this is not the, this is another example that I wanted to show you but uh, let me not give you this example uh yeah yeah oh yeah so we want to do smart to sample our data so this is our future data uh, just let's go back. 
uh, we see that this is our future data and this is our level, right? The level data, right? This is our level data. Um, so what we need to do is to create an object because we import our SMOT here. Can you see that? This All these one are, um, you know, we don't need them because we import them previously. Uh, you can see we import SMOT, right? Now, if we want to do class imbalance, what we need to do is we create, need to create an object called SMOT. Now, we call this class over sample. We create an object here from class SMOT. Now, what you need to do is if you want to fit the data to make it balanced, you need to call this object. You can see it over sample and you fit. And now you inside here, you open, you put your future data and the level. So you can see this is our future data. This is our level, right? So we want to uh, re, you know, make all of these ones, even the future and also the level, we want them, we, we want to make them, you know, uh, all uh, uh, balanced, right? So because here, because we have 2447, and here we also have 2447. So we want to make this class and all this one the same. So here you need to call the object and fit. Fitting is a way to train the data set to learn how it can, you know, uh, do over sampling. And now here you put your future and whatsoever. So you can see this is, you know, uh, but this one return two objects. This fitting return two objects. The first one it returned the uh, transform future. You can see because we put the future at the beginning, the first, so we have transform future and the levels we have transform level. You know, sometimes uh, you may return a tuple, right? So this method return a tuple, two tuples. The first value is, uh, you know, so let me show us uh, over sample what it return here. Over sample, yeah. So you can see this is the first one. See that, and it returns the it returns the uh, um, two stuff. So that's why we say the first one it returns assign it to uh, transform futures and the second one it around this. So let's look at transform futures that it returns. So this is the transform future it returns. Uh, now you can see previously it's what? 2448, right? 2447. Now you can see now it's what? Um, 399. And we can see uh, transform level as well is 34994. And now when we look at the, you know, the distribution now, uh, the new distribution now we can see uh, what is that? Uh, Okay, we run this, we run this, we run this. You can see this is the old, you know, cosin values, right? This is the old one. You can see because I just called DF, but this is a new one. When we run this one, you can see the transform levels. You can see the transform levels now, they are sub 99. So now here we um, make the data um, equal. We balance the data. Now, um, because we can put our data set into one, we can concatenate our futures and this, the level, this is the transform level and futures, we can concatenate them. Uh, concatenation, if you remember in Python, in Pandas, it puts two um, you know, data frame into one. Uh, you can see the axis, we want to put the data because this is our transform you know, levels, this is our transform futures. So what I want is I want to put the transform level here and the futures are here so that we have a single data set with the levels at the beginning and the futures at the end. So what we can do is when you want to concat put data set together, you use a concatenate function. So here we have concatenate, but how do I put the data to set together? I want to put the futures at the beginning and so I want to align them by column, not by row. I want I don't want to put the data set by row. So if you want to align by column, remember we put axis is one, which would and join um, the kind of the method that we want to use. So now here you can see we bring our data set now into a single one. We have the cousin, which is a level target, and we have our futures, which is the kind of data set we want to have to train a machine learning model. So this is the way to uh, you know, balance the data. Just to recap on how we balance the data, it's not that difficult. What we need to do is just to import um, SMART. Uh, remember, um, I showed you yesterday um, imbalance 
class uh, uh, object imbalance uh, imbalance yeah imbalance so you can see um this is imbalance um, library that allows you to you know do this so if we go to smart for example here you can see there are different methods so smart is one of them uh, so you can see this is smart uh, So you can see, for example, there is one method called naive random oversampling. It does for, uh, random oversampling. Um, so for random over to smart, and so you can see this is a smart. So this is one method to do what we call uh, um, to uh, balance your data set. So this is smart. So you can see all you need to do first is just to import your smart, and when you import your smart, it just to create your object, uh, which, for example. Uh, we showed uh, previously here. You can see that create your object smart, which is oversampling. Now you need to call oversample and use the method fit and fit resample. Uh, you can see this uh, resample the data set. So you can see fit resample resample the data set, right? But you need to call on this object. You need to uh, create this object and now call this one. And here you need to fit the future of your data set and the level. And it will return a tuple. The first one will be the transform feature. The second one will be the transform level. And you can now go and put back the transform level and transform feature into a single data set using concatenate. And now we have our data set ready for training machine learning model. Right? Any question? Any question? OK. So if you have a question, you can write in the chat. So now we have data set. So uh, what here, it takes us some time to just explain because we are exploring. But when you have your data set that is, you know, balanced, you don't need to follow these steps and, you know, all those types and cleaning the data. You can just dive in into training your class fair, train your machine learning model. But what we just saw is because, you know, our data set is not balanced, so we need to, like, balance it a bit before we move on into a training machine learning model. So now let's dive into choosing classifier. Um, as I said, what we want to do, basically, to train machine learning model, given these features, and we will ask the model to predict what kind of cuisine is that. That's what we want to do. Um, so we'll use cuisine data set with a variety of classifier to predict given to predict a given national uh, based on the group of ingredients, right? So based on group of ingredient, what kind of national that is? Is it Indian? Is it Thai? Is it Nigeria? Is it United States? Is it you know a state? Is it United Kingdom or whatsoever? That's the plan. Um, so you see, we have unique cuisine. We have Indian, Thai, Chinese, Japanese, Korean, right? That's what we have. Um, you remember, this is our cuisine transform DF. We have our cuisine, we have our features here. So this is the data set we will move on to do the, um, you know, trend machine learning model. So uh, we now want to train machine learning model, right? But there are many machine learning models we want to, um, you know, use. As I said yesterday, uh, we have different machine learning model, whether it's regression, whether it's decision tree, whatsoever. Um, we'll see that when we come, but um, let's move on before we even start talking about, uh, you know, uh, selecting machine learning model. But the first thing you need to do when you want to train your machine learning model um, is to basically, you know, select what we call um, your data set. You need to select your future and you need to select your target. You need to separate these two. Uh, because when you want to train machine learning model, you need to tell machine learning model that this is a future. I give you, learn from it, and this is the target. So because here the data set is a single, we put it in together, you need to split them. So here, select features and target. All columns except the closing column are features, which is right. All columns except this, they are all features, right? Uh, we can select them by grouping closing column. Um, the closing column is the target variable. So here you can see, I uh, remember futures, we call them what X. So now you can see I can call my data frame, transform data frame, um, the drop cuisine. Can you see the drop cuisine axis one by column? So now when I transform, when I drop this, what will happen? See that? What will give us? You can see I drop the, so now I have my only features. You can see that I have my only features, right? 
Um, what about the other one? Uh, selecting the uh, cuisine. Remember, um, in clean machine learning, we said the target, we approximate them, we call them Y, small Y, right? Uh, you can see for uh, selecting the Y, because we are selecting column, only one column, we can say transform DF cuisine. So this one will give us, you know, uh, only the cuisine. So you can see that we, here you can see I use this way strategy to select one column, but here because I have many columns, I cannot put them here to select them. I can, because if I have 20 column, I now, I, I have to put all the column here. I need to see almond here, the first one. If I want to select, if I want to select the X, I, I, I need to do this. Um, but one short way is because I know <clears throat> the data set, it contains everything is future. Only this one is not a future. So I can drop it. So I have everything. So that's what I did here. I dropped the, you know, the cuisine. Uh, so my X is everything. And here I do selection because I have only one column, so I can select it. So now here you can see we have my Y, which is the target. And here I have my X, which is the futures. Um, so we are ready now to train our machine learning model. Any question? Uh, you can ask question uh, if you have. If I'm moving fast. Yes. Yeah, somebody was asking in the chat that is, is there any shortcut for smooth? Shortcut? Yeah. I don't understand what he meant by shortcut. I, what I do understand too is like, he, maybe he was asking if, like instead of saying import pandas as PD, can you be able to say imports smooth as something like this nature? That was what he was asking, I think so. No. <clears throat> import pandas is irrel it's not related to smooth. Um, import pandas is used for, uh, so for you to use smooth, um, as I said, let me delete this. For us to use smooth, this is the only thing we need to do. It's the only step. You need to import um, the, from imbalance to import smooth and create an object all over sample and now transform. These are the only three lines that you needed to balance your data set. This is the only three lines, nothing much. Yeah. Okay, so let's continue. So we have our data set now ready that we can use to train machine learning model. Um, so the next thing is when you want to train your machine learning model, you need to split your data into training and test data. So let's assume this is our full data set. Full data set. You can see this is a full data set when we have here. We have full data set, right? The target and all the futures here. You can see the full data set, right? Full data set. So what I mean by full data set, this is it. Full data set. But the next thing you need to do is, you can see I did, is to arrange the data into futures and target. To divide the data. Uh, yes, you can give smooth alias. Yes, you can do that. Yeah. You can, somebody as you can give smooth alias. Yeah, you can do that. Um, so you can see you need to divide your data from into futures and target. This is what I did. You can see now I create my futures X and now I create my target Y. You can see this is my target, right? So you can create your futures and now you can create your target, right? And then the next thing is you need to divide your data. This data that you created futures and target, you need to divide them into four different sets before you, to train your machine learning model. You need to divide them into four different sets. This future, you need to divide it. You can see that you now we divide it and you need to divide it equally with your um, target. Because this column is called small y, and this column is called x, right? So this is your training. Um, you know, you need to divide your data into train and test data. So what is the essence of training? Uh, because we want to train machine learning model, even when you are given the full, full data set like six, what you need to do is to divide the data into two. The first one is called training data, and the second one is called test data. Now, you train your machine learning model on training data. Uh, training machine learning on training data will allow the model to learn some of the features, some of the you know, noises in the data to learn uh, what will happen. So for example, we can divide this data set into here, and we give the machine learning model from here to, oh, 
So we give him. So the machine learning model will, will turn the machine learning with training data. So he will learn some of this, given this and this, it is this, given this and this, is Indian, given this from the training data. That is it. Now, when you train the machine learning model, how do you know the machine learning model learn? So you still take part of your data, not that much. You can see here, you divide your data with much part of the data can be put as training data. You can see like now, uh, very lion, 70 percent maybe of the data is now you know one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You can see we have 10 you know rows, right? So you can see now here 70 percent because this is seven one, 70 percent are now taken as training data. 30 percent are now taken as what testing data. So we can train our machine learning model with this. So you can see this is some futures and this is the target. So given this future, for example, let's assume this is house futures, like the house has two rooms, has, um, you know, it's in Abuja, has one toilet, and it, this is the price, it's two million. The house how is in Langwa, uh, headquarters, and he has one toilet, and he is, uh, you know, um, the house is dilapidated, and he, the price is 250,000. So you give the machine learning model this kind of data, the future and the value, and train it using the data. So the machine learning model will learn, you know, the machine learning will learn from this data, you know, uh, this. And, you know, some of the optimal way when we divide the data is like, we do what we call 70-30. We divide our training data into 70 each to 30. 70 for training data and 30 for testing data. So now when we train the machine learning model, now we come and test it with testing data. So we give it, um, you say, okay, this is the test data, uh, you know, uh, these are some of the level of test data, predict the level, we don't give you this level. And now, uh, you know, you can see here, this training data is now fused into machine learning model. You can see with training data, use training data, we give you the training data. But this test data is used for testing. Can you see that? This is used for testing. So this is the whole idea on what we use with our data set for training. And so now you can see we have our data, we have our target, we have our Futures, so, and we now have, we divide them into this. The next thing is to divide them in this format. Now, how can we do that? Um, uh, scikit learn come with, um, you know, a function called train test split. Train test split that divide your data into train and test. You can see that we have your data into train and test. You can see the function called train test split means divide my data into training and test set. Can you see split arrays of matter into random train and test set? Now you can see the input of this method is first give it a training data, which is X capital S. You can see what is our X, the futures. You can see that you can give it. What is the second argument is Y, your target. You can see our Y, the target. You can see the first one must be your training data. The second one must be your target. Now the next thing is the test size. How much do you want to buy? So here this division, it means Divide 80% to be the training site and 20% to be the test set. 0 0.2 means 80 used for train. And if I say 0 0.3, it means I'm telling that use 70% as training set and only 30% as test set. So this is there is no you know hard and fast rule that says you need to do 70%, 80%, you know. But you can see the literature, most people use 30, 70, or 80, 20, uh, something like that. A random state, um, this uh, is giving us a random number that uh, uh, um, allow us, when we run this, we have the same split. But this one, trend set split function, return four data set. The first one, it's, it return X trend, you can see X trend. The second one is to return X test, you can see X test. The third one is to return Y trend, this one, Y trend. The fourth one is to return Y test, this one. So you must put them in this order, X train, X test, Y train, Y. And this function will now return this division and assign four data set into this one. So you will have X train. Let me see that. When we call this X train, you can see we have X train. Now you can see we have X train. When you call X test, you will have X test. You can see this one. Uh, when you call Y train, you have white trend. You can see that when you call white test, you have white test. So you can see this function 
for train test split, its main purpose is to divide your data sets into all these four classes, train and test as data set. So now, now we divide our data set. It is now ready. Uh, what is next? You have your train and white train. The next thing is give machine learning model to train it. That is all. You can see, as I said, preparing your data, cleaning your data takes 70% of your time. Give a machine learning model. For example, if you want to cook food in your home, you need to go and get the money, right? You need to go to market to buy the rice. You need to go and buy tomato, tomato, tase, ataru, all these you know, ingredients, right? You need to buy them. But cooking them, all you need is just to, um, you know, on the, you know, your gas and just put the, you know, the, you know, the rice in the, all the ingredients inside. You just, and just, it cooks, right? And depending on the amount of the uh, rice you put, it can take like, you know, um, you know, uh, 30 minutes, you know, all those stuff. So that is it. So here you can see we have our data set ready. Um, yeah. Now our data set is ready to train machine learning model, but now we have to machine learning model. Now we have many class machine learning model uh, for classification. So you can see we have decision tree, random forest, other boards, you know, light edge like boards, light like G, many machine learning. You have many machine learning, but which one is which? Which one is the best? Um, if you want to train your machine learning model, um, how do you select the best one among them? So that's the question. So there are several machine learning models. In fact, uh, we have different kinds of classification. We have what we call a binary classification, and we have what we call multi-class classification. What do I mean by binary classification? Binary classification, if, if you want to, you know, classify something into two classes, for example, this has a cancer, no cancer, cancer, no cancer, cancer, no cancer. This is called binary classification. And some machine learning algorithm only works on binary classification. However, we have another class which is called multi-class classification. So multi-class classification is when you want to predict different classes. So for example, you want to predict the color of what a bug. The color can be red, can be blue, can be yellow, can be white. You, you can see this is what we call multi-class classification. And multi-class classification and some algorithm can work on multi-class classification and also on binary classification. So you need to be sure what kind of classification you want to do. Now, who can tell us in this problem of, you know, cuisine, what kind of classification are we going to do? Is it multi-class classification or binary classification? Multi-class. Yes. Multi so this class is, classification. Yeah, so this is multi-class classification we are going to do. Um, yeah, so um, we need to choose machine learning model. Uh, algorithm that is support multi class. So this is something <clears throat> as well, just to show us, um, you know, uh, this, you can see this is uh, multi class classification algorithms. Uh, answer a question like this is A, B, C, O, D multi class. So you can see we have multi class logistic, multi class neural network, multi class decision tree, uh, one versus all multi class, you know, multi class boosters decision tree. You can see if you have two class binary, you can use support vector, uh, you know, uh, Two class decision tree, two class logistic regression. So you can see logistic regression here. It can do binary classification, uh, multi class classification. It can do what? Binary classification. Can you see that? Decision tree, it can do multi class classification. And also here, you can see two class boosted decision tree. Can you see that? Um, so some algorithm, but for example, support vector machine uh, do binary classification here. So the algorithm you want to do depend whether you want to do binary classification or multi class multi -class, multi class classification. So um, we know we want to do multi class classification. Uh, let's look at our data set now. Again, so we already have our data set which is X train. Um, we have our Y train, right? So you see this data set. These are what we give to machine learning model to train it from here you can see what do we give to machine learning model for training useful training is y train and x train and y train right but if you want to test it we use y test and y x test right so let's go over again um this is a y x train this is a y train um um and then we want to train the machine learning model so we want to use logistic regression but multi-class logistic regression so we need to create an object first to initialize our model. 
So here is logistic regression. This is our model. So we have different kind of model uh, cited line that provided us with. The first one here we want to try is logistic regression. If you look at it here, we said we have logistic regression multi-class. Can you see that? So in scikit learn, if you want to train your model, it's very few lines of code, few lines of code. You don't need much things. So multi-class uh, uh, initialize the object of your you know, model, logistic regression. We initialize it, we say logistic regression is called small logistic regression. But the logistic regression, um, it contains many kind of, you know, algorithms that you can use. Uh, here we say multi class, um, which method it's used is over and solved by is lib linear. There are many kind of, uh, you know, uh, stuff that you can use with. Uh, Yeah, this is what I was talking about. And there are many stuff that you can use um, in multi-class. That is what we call one versus rest, OBR. Um, that is what we call another one called, uh, what do they call? Anyway, um, what I want to say is that uh, when you want to use um, uh, logistic regression, you need to define some other parameters. So if we go here, site logistic regression here, if we go to um, scikit learn website, um, okay, um, let me show us something. Okay. This is scikit learn. So here you can see this is the logistic regression uh, that is used to do uh, regression, uh, multi-class. You can see the it has a lot of parameters, penalty, dual, you know, a lot of parameters this algorithm has. Uh, so we are not here to discuss all these parameters. Um, some of them you can put them. If you don't put them, it's fine. This is an explanation of the parameters. We have what we call penalty, you know, we have uh, many of them solver, what kind of algorithm you want to use, LGBS, Live Linear, Newton, CG Newton, all these algorithms, algorithm to use in optimization problem. Uh, default is LBGPS. So if you don't provide anyone it uses, to choose a solver, you must consider this. For small data set, use Live Linear is a good choice. And where I suck and add for pasta for larger ones. So there are a lot of details that we may not. Live Linear is limited to one versus or S. So there are a lot of um, stuff that we may not go deep into, but there, um, there are much more uh, stuff that we need to learn about this. So let's go on. Uh, you can see this is logistic regression and what kind of multi-class. See here, this object, uh, multi-class. Um, let me show. Sure, something. Yeah, so you can see you can provide this multi class. If it is multi class, if you want to do logistic regression and you want to do multi class, you can provide this. Can you see that? Um, yeah, so this is what this means is saying I want to use multi class and, and you want to use this method and so that. So this is you create an object called logistic regression and um, you now, now fit the model. So this fitting the model. It's just like training the data, training step. So you see here, we said we need to train our model, right? To give it excellent and my train. So training the model is what we call fitting the model. Fit the model. You can see it on X train and Y train. But I must use this object, LR, that I declare. You can see that logistic regression dot fit. Because when I call this logistic regression, all the algorithm, the techniques are now embedded into this object LR. So if I call another, I can just call another algorithm and save it as well. So this object LR, now object is the one that now contain all the algorithms and now you train fit it on the external and this. So this fit function is what we call like, you know, modeling, uh, training machine. Learning. You can see the term fit is synonym with the train. So when you fit a model to data, you are training the model on that data. So now here we are fitting the data on our training and we are training the data. Can you see that? Uh, 
That's what this fit method does. So from here, we already now train our machine learning model. This only these lines, we train our machine learning model. This line and this line, we train the machine learning model. You can see the machine learning model training is very simple and easy, right? We just now train our machine learning and easy as, um, you know, as ABC. But now when you train your machine learning model, what next? You want to check its performance, right? Whether it is good uh, or not, right? Um, so for us to train, uh, check the machine learning model performance, you remember here, um, you know, used for testing, X text and Y test is used for testing, right? So we can test with X test and Y test. If we go there and now uh, for accuracy, we can see, you know, X test, Y test. Can you see that X test? So here I call model because this is the machine learning model I fit in. Now I have it stored in something model. After you train the machine learning model, now the learning are now stored on, are now stored in model. What you learn now on X and Y is now. So now if you want to find out that your X test and Y test, you want to find out whether the model learn based on the X set and Y states, because X set and Y set, these are the values here. X state and Y set, these are the values. So here the model will try to compare that the value X set and Y set, do they correspond, are they correspond based on the model? So this is uh, what we call accuracy. And the score is called accuracy. Remember, um, uh, this is the accuracy of our model. So the model is somehow good with accuracy of 0 0.79. Remember, in regression, you have a different kind of accurate, uh, way to find out the uh, how the model evaluation uh, performance is. That is the performance evaluation. So you can see here uh, two things. The first thing you need, given the data, is just create an object. Because we are doing logistic regression, that is why here I call this. If I use a decision tree, I can call decision tree. And now you fit your model on X trend data and Y trend data. And now finally, you now you know find the model on the test data. You now uh, fit the model, you now uh, test the model, find the accuracy. Score is the accuracy, score is the accuracy. Um, yeah, so that is what we have here. And then finally, you can also use what we call confusion matrix. Um, you can use uh, what we call classification report. So here you can see we basically um, calculate the accuracy using the X test and Y test. But there is another stuff called uh, confusion matrix that can use uh, to calculate some other uh, parameters. So for example, there are many performance evaluation for classification. We can use accuracy. We can use precision. We can use recall. We can use F1 score, rock cup, AUC, dog loss. All these are... Uh, kind of, you know, evaluative performance stuff that you can use to evaluate the performance, whether the machine learning algorithm does good or not. All this one, you can use to measure the performance of the algorithm, whether it's good or not. Here, the score here, we have here, the score here is accuracy. That is the, uh, the more we have, if you have accuracy of 0 0.99, it means the algorithm is very good, the, you know, the model is good. If you have accuracy of 0 0.1, 0 0.2 is terribly bad you know, the algorithm doesn't learn anything from the data. Um, here, uh, if you want to use, um, you know, um, have precision recall an F1 score, you can use what we call, um, you know, uh, confusion matrix. So confusion matrix, what you need to do is this, is it, a uh, classification report, you need to give it the X test and what we call Y pred. X test, already we have X test here, right? You can see X test, right? So, but it need another thing, not Y test, but what is called Y prayed. Now, how do I find Y prayed? So, um, you can see here, we train our machine learning model, we train on this, and we find the accuracy on Y test. But what we want to do is, to find Y prayed is, use the model, use this X test, to predict the value of Y. Use X test and predict the value of Y. That predicted value is what we call y prayed. If the y prayed, the prediction, everything is the same with this, then you have 100% accuracy. So this is what we mean by that. Um, let me show you what I mean by that. So, uh, okay. 
This is what I mean by white bread. So you take your model that you fit in and call another function called pred, predict, and you give it X test. And now you have white bread. You now have prediction of the pre, uh, you give the model text data, which is this, you give it this test data and say, hey, the model, these are my test data. Predict, this is the house one, different uh, data about house two. Uh, predict the price. So you can see that that is not white test, that is white bread. That is what why I call it white bread. So, but you must to call um, user object model that you fit in the model, model that you fit. You must use that object model that predict and you give it X and you have white bread. So now one thing, since we have white bread, can we compare the value of white bread that you predicted and see if they are the same with Y test, the original ground theory, then the machine learning algorithm is 100%. If it fell in two or three, you can see it's 90 something percent. So that's um, uh, what we want to fit in into a classification report. You need to give it the Y test, the original ground truth, and now what you predicted. So what we predicted here, you can see the model prediction, and you can see um, uh, this is it, Y pred, because here is an array, it changes to data frame. Y pred changes to data frame, you can see this is the pred, Indian. And what is the original, Y test origin? You can see the first one is Indian, the second one is Japanese. You can see Indian, Japanese. You can see uh, Indian, the third one is Indian. You can see the Y pred, and why tests, they are more or less the same thing, but in some ways they will differ. They may not actually be perfect in all the cases, right? Um, but they may, uh, may typically be the same. Let me see this one, 70. Anyway, it's not the same. So that is how we can calculate the, you know, your classification report, which is um, confusion matters. So here you can see X set and Y fret, and now here we have this. So let me take this one to bring it here. Um, oh yeah, yeah. So oh yeah, here I calculate the white bread. So this is what we call confusion matrix, and basically it allows you to have what we call precision recall and F1 score. These are all um, measurement of classification algorithm: F1 score, recall, and precision. What is um, accuracy? Accuracy, in a way, is not always good to use accuracy. If your data set is unbalanced. If your data set is unbalanced, don't ever use accuracy. It will not give you the correct, you know, um, accurate, uh, correct uh, evaluative performance. If your data set is balanced, you can use accuracy. But if your data set is not balanced and you have not balanced it, you can now, um, you know, adopt other uh, evaluative measures such as precision recall and F1 score. So this is it. Um, this recall and precision uh, is, uh, recall is uh, something that, um, we may not dive in now and precision. Oh, it's already time. So just let's assume that uh, precision are recall and also, um, you know, some of the accuracy. So you can see for each um, level Chinese, this is the value of precision. This is the value of recall. This is your F1 score. F1 score of 0 0.68 is also good. The uh, F1 score can be like, you know, uh, uh, F1 score can be like, uh, you know, up to one, zero to one. When you have F1 score one, then the algorithm is perfect, it's excellent. All this one, the you know, the precision is zero to one, the recall is zero to one, everything. Now that is it. And you know, yeah, uh, this is what we have. Um, but we can train our another algorithm, decision class three classifier. So you can see um here I can say I say decision classifier. I import the decision classifier from scikit learn first. I want to Re, um, train the machine learning algorithm by different classifier, not logistic regression. Here you can see we use logistic regression, right? Logistic regression, right? But I want to change another classifier. So here you, I said, let me use logistic regression. Uh, you, you can see I import logistic regression. I create an uh, logistic regression decision tree classifier, an object. You can see I now fit into train and uh, white tail. Let me just remove this. It can run. You can see that. I can fit into X and trail, and now I find my accuracy, right? To find the accuracy, you need to call the model, you need to call the function called score on your model and give it what X test and Y test. So this is your accuracy is 0 0.733. Because why do we use accuracy? Because you remember we already make the data set into a um, 
balance, we balance the data set. So if you have balanced data set, you can use accuracy. But if you don't have balanced data set, you better use F1 score and you know precision article. Just to recap, if you don't have balanced accuracy, balanced data set, use F1 majors. If you have balanced data set, accuracy you can use. Um, here you can see I want to use um, another data set. So this is just the function that you use to train your machine learning model. This is just section. You can see the is very small, right? So you can see I call another, um, you know, classifier, random forest classifier. Random forest classifier is a classifier to train machine learning algorithm using you know, random forest algorithm. Um, so you can see that I create another object called random forest classifier. I call it RF, and now fit. You can see that I fit into, I now fit into, I now fit my train and Y train and X train. And now call the model, I call accuracy into on top of the model and now have my X test and Y test. And now you can see my accuracy is 0.819. So you can see my accuracy. This means that random forest classifier now is better on this data set than decision tree. And then because decision tree is 0 0.73, uh, random forest is 0 0.819. And if you go back to the previous one, uh, the, uh, the classifier logistic regression, the accuracy, I think is not that the same. You can see 0 0.792. So all of this, you know, algorithm, we can see that um, random forest give us the better performance. This is how you train your machine learning model. And this is somehow a general template of, you know, uh, um, we, because now we have seen this, this is general template, um, you know, to train your machine learning model. The general template is that you see here, I import a random forest here, I import this, but when you want to even try different machine learning algorithm, what you need to do is just import everything at the top. You import everything at the beginning. So here you can see accuracy score. Uh, this is a train test split, that function that performs train test split. Remember we have train test split um, because I took the steps one by one trying to show us what everything does. So you remember this train test split, uh, what allow us to use this? We need to import this class, train test split. So this is, you know, what uh, does that? You can see, uh, import train test split. Accuracy, for that score, this score, we saw this score function. Uh, if we don't uh, import this one, we will not be able to use it. Then we have standard scalar. I told you, you can use many pre-processing. For that, so this standard scalar it can use for preset, but here we didn't process the data here again. And now here you can import the algorithm here. So you can see here we, um, the first step is load your data if you want to train machine learning model, load your data and put it as X, Y, or you you know select them and whatever. And now you do you do transformation if you wanted. We may uh, some data set need to be to do some transformation. Uh, yeah. Uh, you do divide the data in train test split, initialize your model, fit the model, and now you know evaluate, uh, predict if you want to do that, and now accuracy, uh, find the accuracy score. Also. This is basically the general steps of machine learning model. Um, yeah, so I think we come to this part of end of this session uh, here where we saw the uh, machine learning. Uh, how to train our machine learning model. Okay, wow. Nagaji. Okay, any question? Yes, uh, can follow, I said this, yeah, uh, yeah, I will push this um, notebook to uh, GitHub, but it's basically the same on what you have in GitHub. I just, you know, select something and add some stuff just to explain, to make the uh, explanation a bit more better. But this is what you have, but I'll push it as well uh, to the immediately to the uh, GitHub repository. Any question again? All right. Okay. So Idambab question um, we see next week. Um, next week, inshallah, we start um, clustering. I think now we are finished, uh, you know, um, uh, cl classification, but uh, uh, I will prepare some example that you need to do as uh, assignment this week for classification so that you can practice uh, classification algorithm. Uh, we want to emphasize uh, data come. Uh, you already been notified that uh, 
you should be practicing data cam and certificate. Uh, try as much as possible. I think the deadline is today, Sunday, right? To submit your um, uh, curriculum. If you have some challenges, let us know. But um, as we already said, um, we don't want a situation whereby you only put more time when uh, the um, uh, fellowship comes to an end, you don't learn anything. So we want you to, you know, um, keep learning, uh, just learn as long as, uh, along the way, just to keep practicing daily. Um, yeah, any question? Uh, any question? Okay, so thank you very much for joining us and uh, um, bye-bye for now, ciao.